Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and good afternoon. Hallelujah. It is time for our worship service. Hallelujah. And we are excited on today. We are expecting a move of God on today. It's unto you today according to your expectation. What are you expecting on today? I pray that it is good. Hallelujah. Because he has nothing but good things for us. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. This God is our God forever and ever. And he will guide us even until the end. Hallelujah. And he is worthy. Hallelujah. Again, welcome to our worship service. We are ready to get started and we hope that you are too. So go ahead and get everything that you need. Get your paper, get your pens, get your offering, get everything together. It's time for worship on today. Amen. Let somebody know, amen, what's going on right now because they will be blessed. Amen. For connecting however they will. Hallelujah. So we're just ready to lift up God on this morning. We're ready to give him glory because he is good. He has been good. Hallelujah. And our expectation is of him on today. Hallelujah.
because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, it's good to see you all out here this morning, this afternoon. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me catch my breath too. Amen. Well, at this time, we're going to have some goodness testimonies. Amen. Goodness testimonies. Amen. How many of you have a testimony you want to share? Hallelujah. We're talking about the goodness of God. Amen. Not the weariness and the devil been busy. That's not how we testify. Amen. Amen. We testify of the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. And the goodness, like Pastor always said, when you get those football games, I know y'all waiting. Oh, what's the highlight? You even see a play. Oh, I know that's going to be one of the highlights of the game. Amen. So we know some of your testimonies. Oh, I know that's going to be a highlight of her testimony. Amen. So at this time, we're going to do some goodness testimonies. I want to share quickly um, a byproduct of goodness. Um, when April um, came to pick me up on Thursday, well, I think, yeah, on the way to pick me up from church, she said, Mommy, I'll be there in a minute. I've lost um, a, um, a money order that I had. I said, oh, we can't be losing no money. Nothing, amen. So I said, well, April, just look around the car. Just look, you'll find him. And so when she got there, I said, baby, you're going to recover from all loss. It will be recovered. So she backtracked and she went back. She said, Mom, I'm going back to Kroger. Well, actually, I was in the car with her. We went back to Kroger. And she went in there. She came back in a few minutes. Mommy, I got it. I got it. Now, this money order hadn't been filled out. The receipt was with it. So somebody could have very well taken it and put it in their name. But because she's connected to her mama, amen, amen, and she's receiving good and she recovered from all loss, amen, and want to share. Um, just it's been a blessing um, for me this year. Um, I know a couple months ago I was able to pay off my car. And I was, I would say, God, I said, thank you because then I can get to, to give more, you know. Because that car, it was at the end and they wanted to cut up. I was like, uh uh. We're not getting a new car. The, um, the motor went out. So I received some favor from there and a financial blessing. Amen. So I thank God for that. And even on top of that, that was forgiven. Amen. So that goodness is carrying on, it's continuing on. And I've just been able to do some great things regarding finances. So I just thank God for what he's done. And it's trying to cut up again. I said, no, in the name of Jesus, you still going to run. You got many more miles to run, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's some of my goodness testimony. I just thank God for keeping family and friends from this COVID, amen. Uh, from what, you know, from, from the, the attacks of the enemy. So I thank God for all of that. Amen. Hallelujah. Does anyone else have a goodness testimony? Amen. And we're going to get the highlights of it, okay? Amen. Brother Nate? All right, come on, let's thank God for Brother Nate. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I Thank give honor, uh, honor to the Lord and to his son, Jesus. I just want to uh, want to give a testimony. I called my mom this morning. Uh, uh, I was going to go see my mom over the, over, the, over the weekend, 
but some things came up and I believe God said no. And so when God said no, that's a, that's a no, you know, and, uh, and some other things came about. And so, uh, I was able to get with, uh, go with the pastor and different things and volunteer for some things here in the ministry. And, uh, and that's what it's about. It's about Jesus. And so I called my mom. See, I'm a mama's boy. Even though I'm at the age I am, I, mean, I ain't going to tell nobody my age. I'm still a mama's boy. You know, I really am. And, uh, and, uh, and so I called my mama this morning, you know, cause my mom had a stroke about, about a month and a half or so ago. And, uh, she lost all the feelings on her, on her left side. You know, and uh, actually she had five, and the fifth one was the biggest one. And uh, my brother, older brother, is down there with her now. And so I go back and forth from here, you know, and to Michigan to see my mom. And, uh, and uh, so she had a stroke about a, a two months ago and, uh, and, and lost all the feeling in her left side. And, uh, and we got people that's down there, two, two ladies come in to take care of her and uh, get her to the shower and, and bathe and everything. And, and she couldn't even use the washroom on her own and different things like that, you know. And, and now she's got to the point where, where she, can, she can use the washroom on her own. And, and, uh, and, but I called, her this, I called her this morning and said, Mom, how you doing? And she said, oh, I'm doing very well. My mom is saved. And uh, she said, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing very well. She said, she said praise the Lord. Uh, 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 little Nate, they call me Little Nate because of my dad. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Little Nate. I'm doing very well. She said, let me tell you, son. She said, because the left side wasn't given. It wasn't given on at all. She said, but let me tell you what the, what the Lord is doing. She said, I can get up out of my bed on my own right now. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord, mama. Praise the Lord. She said, and the left side giving, giving a little bit on me. It's giving a little bit. I said, praise the Lord, mama. That's good. That's good news. That's good news, mama. That's good news. She said, I can get up and I can go to the bathroom on my own with the walk. I said, praise the Lord, mama. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I said, that's good news, mama. That's, that's good news. That's good news. She said, and Jerry, going, that's my older brother, he going to put some, some things on the side of the wall for me so I can hold, so I can hold and, uh, and, go, to the, and go to the bathroom on my on my own, you know, you know. I said, that's good news, mom. That's good news. She said, but the Lord is good. She said, but let me tell you what I really want to do, little Nathan. I said, what is that, mama? She said, I'm praying and believing, you know, that I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out this, this door and I'm going to go out there and get my dog and we're going to go for a walk. I said, I, said, I said, praise the Lord, mama. I said, I'm believing that with you, mama. I'm touching and agreeing right now and believing that with you. And I, and I just wanted to share that with you all. You all keep praying for my mom. Her name is Minnie Simmons. And pray for my brother and pray for our families. And thank you. Amen. Mama spoke that thing. Amen. Hallelujah. It, has, it comes from here. Amen. It has to be spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for that testimony, brother Nate. Anybody else have any goodness testimonies? Minsa Kenya, amen. Let's thank God for Minsa Kenya. Praise the Lord. This is, um, it's not small to me, but I, I just thank God, you know, for seeing some progress. I, um, I talked to my son Friday, and um, he's staying in Nashville because he, his jo he's out of school, but his job is there. And so he's staying with a relative. And so there were some things going on that, you know, at the house, a house party or whatever. And, you know, I told him, I said, son, you're going to eventually, you're going to have to make a stand. You know, because some of the, you know, relatives, they have a, a big influence in his life. They've given him cars and, you know, taken good care of him, picked up, you know, stood in the gap, you know, financially. But I told him, you know, you're going to have to make a stand. And he said, uh, he said, I... I don't plan on going back tonight. But then he was asking me some questions. He wanted to know, and if he know I'll tell this, he'll get upset with me. But he was asking me some questions about drinking because there are some things that the scriptures don't speak specifically to. And you know, a lot of times people, you know, the Bible says, you know, you, you know, they drink wine and all this, this, and this, and you and I was trying to help him see, you know, that's not, but that don't help you serve Jesus. That can't help you. So anyway, I finally gave him a scripture about all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. I sent him, I sent it to him in about three different translations, message, message easy and amplified. And then um, he texted me back and he said, I see now. 
And I just have to believe God that he sees. And so all we can do is just keep laboring with the word and doing our work, expecting it to work and trusting God that he'll do, that the Holy Spirit, that he'll do his part. Hallelujah. So I just thank the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. Cause you know, I think about how, you know, we, all of our children that, you know, I think all the ones that came in, they're adults now. And we, we know the word that they got when they came here into the ministry. So, you, you know, we come up and I, there will be situations with some of them. I said, well, they know the word. You know, they're held accountable for what they've been taught. They know it. But, um, but, you know, as parents, we come in and reinforce that word and just lift them up to the Lord and say, Lord, they belong to you. You know, I've been the best steward I can over them, but they belong to you. And they made that choice to make him Lord and Savior of their lives. So, you know, we thank God for those babies. And I think about Ken, um, Caleb and the other little ones who were here. You know, I wish we could have gotten that word when we were seven or eight years old. Man, just imagine things that we, even if we didn't avoid it, it, didn't have, it wouldn't tear us down. Because pastors always take you, say you make a decision, it takes you further than, than you want to go and take you longer than you want to stay. And I think we've been in those situations. We don't want to see our children go through those things. So um, let's continue to pray for them that that, that word, will, the Holy Spirit will bring that word back to their remembrance. And then they will do what the word says to do. Amen. Amen. We got one more. Okay, let's bring up Sister Lawana. All the way from Mississippi, right? All the way from Mississippi. Amen. <laughs> what are they talking about in Mississippi? Amen. <laughs> I just truly thank God for being here. I thank God for all his goodness. Um, this time last year, I did a vision board, and I put it on my wall, and on my vision board was increase. Amen. And um, as all of you know, I went from 50 to 75. Amen. I put on my board LMSW. I passed that test yes. this year Amen. and got licensed. Yeah. Um, I put on my vision board a house, and my credit went from dump to up there so now I can buy me a house. I just truly, and I paid my call, and I speak to it every day and said, you got about 75,000 more miles to go. I, I remember when pastor said he spoke to his air conditioning, I said, so if the man of God can speak to this air conditioning, I can speak to my car. And I just thank God for it, it's paid off, it's mine, I don't owe nobody nothing. I just truly thank God and I believe in God that I'm gonna get a letter from Student Sound Long and saying it's been forgiven. Oh, and so I just truly thank God for being here and being, you know, around the environment that's conducive for my um, spiritual growth, my financial growth. I asked God this year, I said, Lord, show me what to do in the month of December. And I was able to bless families. Yes. And I ain't through blessing families. Ah. And I'm gonna double the blessing next year in Jesus' name. <laughs> so I just thank God, you know. A lot of times when I'm looking for marriage, you have to sew into marriages. I'm looking for a house, so I have to sew into somebody's house. And you never know when or how God is telling you to do it, but you leave that up to him. So I just thank God for being obedient and just blessing me this whole year. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for all those testimonies. Amen. And I'm going to close out with this one. I, I'm like Mrs. Uh, Luana. She gave me some um, Bath and Body Works for my birthday. And I hadn't done Bath and Body Works in years because it smells and stuff. But she brought me one. She said, I don't know if you're going to like it. But it's just, I said, oh, tea tree and lamb. The girl, yeah, I like those. So after that, I was like, I said, Lord, I want to do something for all the kids at the academy, all the, all the children at the academy. And so the girls, they love Bath and Body Works. I walk in the room. I said, oh, it's too much sweet in here. But they love the sweet stuff. So when every, every um, day they have their specials, I would check my email and I would go to Bath and Body, I'd pick up this and I'd pick up that. So I was able to bless, and, that, and I'm not boasting me, but that was something that I had put on my heart, I put on, I put before the Lord, definitely not boasting on me. But I was able to get all of those, the, the boys and the girls, something for Christmas. So that, I was so excited about that. So I said, Father, I just thank you for the increase of not having to pay that car note, amen. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, we're going to bring up Sister Minister Kenya for the ministry of giving. Amen. Praise. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is our opportunity to continue further in the service, worshiping the Lord in the area of giving. If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand and our greeters will get one to you. And those of you watching by Facebook. You can call the church office, 615-896-5333, or you can go to our website to give, 
www.alccministries.org. But you all, we're, we're going from enough to plenty so we can be a blessing to many. Amen? Praise God. And you know, Thursday we heard uh, an awesome word, you know, just about being anointed to see. And you know, God, he gives seed to the sower. And I've already told the Lord how much I want to give additionally each month, you know, above my tithes and offerings, but I just need to see how to get there. You know, because whether it's the, through a business, the Lord gives me an idea for a business or he gives me, connects me with, with right relationships, but I just need to hear and see and receive what to do you know, to help us to be able to give that, because I've already got it made up in my mind. You know, the heartbeat of the church, the heartbeat of the church is outreach ministry. Amen. Praise God. If we aren't involved in outreach, if we aren't involved in outreach, the life of Jesus isn't flowing through us. Amen. I'm going to say that again. If we're not involved in outreach, Jesus' body, we're not relevant. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Go to Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20 because this is what Jesus said. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so we need the resources to go. And that's where your tithes and your offerings come in. Praise God. And we know, we know what giving represents. We know it represents our love. We know it represents honor and obedience and trust and faith towards God. But you know, we can't withhold our, our tithes and offerings and say with good conscience that we're loving, honoring, and obeying him. You know, Romans 16, 26, it talks about commandments being made known for the obedience of faith. Faith has an obedience to it. And so if, we, if we're not obeying the Lord in the area of giving, we're really not in faith. We're really not trusting God. We're really not trusting him to be our source. We really don't believe that he'll supply all of our needs. We don't really believe that God is going to take care of us. Obedience, faith has an obedience side to it. The obedience of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now back to outreach ministry. Because we know, we know the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. This story was told in all four gospels. Amen. Amen. And in Matthew 14, you know, Jesus, he saw the multitudes and he was moved with compassion toward them and he healed the sick and he taught them. And so it was getting late in the day. They were in a desert place and the disciples told Jesus to send them away so that they could go and buy themselves something to eat. Now listen to Matthew 14, verse 16. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And I thought about that. They need not depart. See, Jesus, he had been laboring with them. He had been teaching them. He had been getting a deposit into them. And that deposit, it needed to be guarded. They didn't need to be worrying about their needs at that time. They didn't need to be distracted with their needs. So he said, don't send them away. You give them something to eat. So what, what I'm saying to you is this, what we're doing in ministry, we're teaching, we want to teach them the word of God. We want to we get this deposit in them, but we also want to help with some of those domestic needs so they're not distracted. You know, if you're hungry, you got bills to pay, you're worrying about where you're going to lay your head, it's hard for you to receive that spiritual ministry. But through the tithes and the offerings and we're making sure that the storehouse is supplied, we can go beyond teaching, we can actually do some help. Man. Glory to God. I can listen a whole lot better when I know you're really, really walking. And see, that help is supposed to come through the church. Jesus said they need not depart. You give them something to eat. Yeah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. That's why we've got to go from enough to, to plenty so we can be a blessing to many. So Jesus performed a miracle with what they gave. And he was able to feed thousands. And that's why, you know, I hadn't necessarily seen this, but these are biblical principles. We've got to trust what the word says and do it how the word says. He said, I will multiply your seed sown. So the miracle was performed with what they gave. Hallelujah. And it fed thousands. It fed multitudes. And so you look around and you see, you know, the, the, the number of us that are here. But God can do miracles with what we give. You know, with the size of Gideon's army, God can do miracles. So Lord, as we endeavor to minister in the community, again, we've got to get, help them with some of these domestic things so that they're not distracted. So that when we go in and teach them, hallelujah, they, you know, they, they're not even, their minds isn't on that. They can receive, they can receive the word. And this came out of the ministry that went forth last night. It was such a blessing. You have a colorful future. They got taught the word of God, souls got saved, and then other ministries were there partnering with us. And I just want to thank God for those that labored behind the scenes. We got foot soldiers on the ground going every Friday, knocking on door, all of these things. We just give God the praise for every hand, every laborer, everything that's going forth. But when it comes time for tithes and offerings, hallelujah. The heartbeat of the church yeah. is outreach ministry. Amen. And let's, we want to keep this storehouse fed and filled. Amen. Yeah. Let's stand on our feet. Oh. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the vision, for the mission of this ministry. We thank you, Lord, for these, your people. Thank you, Father, that you give us seed to sow. You give us bread for our food. You multiply our seed sown and you increase the fruits of our righteousness. God, we thank you, Lord, that you open the windows of heaven as we bring our tithes into the storehouse. You, you, you open the windows of heaven. You pour us out blessing, dreams, visions, ideas, strategies, right relationships, and everything that we need, oh God, to perform your work in the community. And I thank you that the devourer is rebuked in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we just give you all the praise. Father, continue to equip us, Lord God, with plenty so we can be a blessing to many. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the people. We're blessed when we come and when we go.
you know what? She got to serve us hard. So she was cleaning up. I, I saw it. I saw it cleaning up. Amen. So we thank you for coming to partake with us on today. Amen. Hallelujah. So here I am to worship, Lord. I'm here to worship you, Father God. Like I said, worship is a lifestyle. Not what we do coming here on Sunday morning, on Thursday night. It's what you say, what you do, what you think. Amen. That's your worship. Amen. Because all of that should be every thought, every purpose, every intent, every act should be pointed toward the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything you do and say should be unto him. So let's just set our hearts, our minds on him. Amen. Amen. Clear out the clutter oh. and let's turn our attention towards him. Amen. 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 Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. You opened my eyes and let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a Spit with you.
amen, that the church is the light of the world. Matthew 5, 13, the salt of the earth, we're the light, amen, and people are supposed to be coming to our light. So we're supposed to be the, uh, the asset and not the problem, not the liability. Amen. Why? Because we're light barriers and light carriers. Amen. So we have to know the distinction and the difference between relief and freedom. Relief is temporary. Freedom is eternal. Amen. So, so a lot of times, you know, people are looking for relief when they really need to be hunting for freedom. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 36, whom the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. So only Jesus can set you free. Now the world and the government, amen, and the medical society, they can give you some relief. But only Jesus can give you freedom. Amen. Now go ahead and get your relief, but don't let that be your freedom. Right. Just use it until you learn how to get free. Amen. 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 Don't live off of it. Don't depend on it. Don't modify your life around getting it because they can cut it off any time. Amen. 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 And this is why so many people are offended in the church and in the world because they, 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 they use it relief for freedom. And when they relief run out, amen, they get offended and they make excuses and blame their condition on others. Because they didn't, they didn't learn how to get free while they were getting the relief. Y'all listen to me now. Because I'm seeing this. I'm an employer. I own a business. Amen. We, 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 we manage overseas school. Amen. And we have to deal with parents. We have to deal with employees. We have to deal with business. We, we, and a ministry. In all these areas, I'm seeing, amen, what the problem is. And the problem is, people are mistaking freedom for relief. Yeah. Mm. And so they get their relief, and they think they're supposed to fix it. And when they don't fix it, they get offended. Amen. And I keep trying to tell them, only Jesus can set you free. Amen. Amen. Money is relief. It ain't freedom. Right. Amen. Medicine is relief. It ain't freedom. Right. Only Jesus can give you freedom. And we can't make no mistake about that. I said we cannot mistake that. We cannot misunderstand that. Amen. Only Jesus can give people freedom. And a lot of times people, they, 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 uh, and, and, and so, uh, well, we don't want to get into that. But anyway, amen. We have to see the distinction between freedom and relief. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 31, if you continue in my word, somebody say continue. continue. See, not commercially follow. Right. Amen. But continuance. What does continuance denote? Ongoing. Amen. Perpetual. Amen. Glory to God. Continuance means continuance. Continuance means that when you tempted not to, you still continue. See, continuance doesn't start until after you tempted not to. Right, right, right. Mm, you don't get to continue until you tempted not to continue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Just like going to the gym. Sometimes I, I get up, I don't feel like going, going, you know, I'm tempted not to go. But guess what I do? I continue. Yeah. And that's how I end up there at the gym. It's because I continued in something. That's how I end up in prayer. Some mornings I don't feel like praying. Some mornings I don't feel like reading the word. But I ended up in prayer and in the word because I continued beyond temptation. Yes. See, you don't get to continue until you're tempted not to. Yeah. Mm. Anybody can continue up until temptation. But you don't get to continue until something is attacking your continuum. That's why the football player out for the Tennessee Titans, that running back, Derrick Henry, that's why he's so sought after and so relevant and valuable. Why? Because he made more yards after he's hit, yeah. after he's contacted, than he do before he contacted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So a Christian validity is, 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 is verified and in, 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 in do they continue after they contact? Yeah. Mm. Can you continue after you get hit? Can you continue after somebody cuss you out, flip you off, 
say something crazy to you. Can you continue in love? Come on, somebody. Amen. And see, we got to get this, get to this place where we, we value our freedom and we go for it until we get it. Amen. Glory to God. Because when you get free, man, listen, it, it's over for the devil. You, you pass that test. You got the trophy, the victory. Amen. Glory to God. You're crowned. Amen. Why? Because you continue beyond temptation and now you've entered into freedom. Mm. And the objective of Jesus getting involved, involved in our life is to make us free. Yeah. I can serve better when I'm free, live better when I'm free, give better when I'm free. Woo, go to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He wants to liberate you. That's why he put his Holy Spirit in you. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Now, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Mm. This is what I love about free, being free. This is what I love about it. Look there in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Jesus said, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house, his marriage, his business, his career, his ministry up on the rock. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, look, notice, doing what Jesus said don't exempt you from challenges. Right. It just gives you the answer to it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Because the challenge is coming to try to steal that word because the word has the potential to make you free right. if you continue in it. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and do it then. Beyond temptation, right? You continue doing it. And the Bible said, and the rain descended. The coronavirus came. The economic oppression beat up on that house. All the uproar and rest going on in the world. Beat up on that house. Beat up on that ministry. Beat up on that career. What happened? And it failed not. Why? Because it was built upon doing what Jesus said. That's where your freedom going to come from. Doing yeah. what Jesus said. That's where it's going to come from, y'all. Amen. Amen. Getting the word, getting the word, hearing Jesus say something, and going and doing it. Mm. That's where your freedom going to come from. How many of y'all want to be free? Yeah. Amen. And not only, amen, am I free, but I want to be free of. Yeah. <laughs> free, free, free again. Hey, I don't want to be bound by nothing. I don't want nothing having to meet with Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that today. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all got your Bibles with you? Amen. Glory to God. Turn your Bible to Psalms 23. Glory to God. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to hear and receive your word, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear and receive counsel from the Most High God. The, 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 the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who overcame everything, conquered everything, defeated everything, the one who rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave, the one who spoiled principalities and powers, made an open show of Satan and all of his cohorts, the one who's seated at the right hand side of the throne of God. We come to hear from you today, Lord Jesus, and we purpose in our heart, Lord, to do what you say. And we thank you that as we hide, our, hide your word in our heart, you'll renew our mind and conform our thinking to, the, to, the, to, to what you promised. And we thank you and praise you that your word will go forth today unhindered, unchecked by any demonic force, that the lost will be saved, the sick will be healed, the poor will be delivered, the oppressed set free. Now we thank you and give you all the glory for all that you do declare and say in our midst. In Jesus' name we have prayed and given thanks. Somebody say amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let's talk about accessing divine guidance and instruction. Amen. Because uh, everything that God has thought and planned for us is subject to him leading and guiding us. Amen. He said, I know the thoughts, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, that I thank towards you, said the Lord, thoughts and plans for peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. So even though God has thought and planned great things for us, 
amen, is conditioned upon him leading us and us following him. Amen. To the degree that he can lead us, that's the degree that he can fulfill what he has thought and planned for us. Amen. We will never actualize and possess and live out what he's thought and planned for us unless we let him lead and guide us. <clears throat> Glory to God. So we got to understand the importance of divine guidance. God is committed to leading and guiding us. Notice what he said in Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Mm -hmm. Man, if you let him shepherd you and you follow him, he'll lead you right out of want. Amen. You won't even get the want for nothing Amen. if you follow him. Amen. Amen. God ain't going to lead you into want. God ain't going to lead you into depression. God ain't going to lead you into sickness. He ain't going to lead you into disease. He ain't going to lead you into nothing, amen, that he ain't thought and planned for you. And he told us in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, what he thought and planned for. Thoughts and plans for peace and not of evil. We only go in, encompass evil, amen, glory to God, when we're not following him. Mm. Amen. Amen. I says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Notice what he said. He leadeth me. Verse 2. Look at the next verse. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. He, he does what? He maketh me to lie down and crash green pastures. He leadeth me. What? Besides the waters. See, if I'm following him. Because if I'm following him, this is where I'm going. Phew, glory to God. Are y'all seeing this? Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. Amen. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. See, if he just keep leading me, if I keep following him, look where I end up at. In paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. He wants to lead us. Amen. And he's only committed to lead us to the degree that we're committed to follow. Are y'all seeing this today? Look there in Psalms 32. Psalms 32. Amen. Look at verse 8. Psalms 32. Verse 8, amen, he is committed to lead us, but are we committed to follow? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that you should go. Look at what he said, and I will guide you with my eye. Look at what, look at that word, I will. That means he's committed, totally. When you tell somebody, I will, you, you committed. All your resources and everything connected to you is committed. You are committed when you say, I will. God says, I will instruct you. I will guide you. Man, when God is instructing you and guiding you, you're the smartest person in the room. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. When God is leading you and guiding you, divinity done hit humanity. Glory to God. Heaven done hit the earth. Whoa, glory to God. And this is in, in the Romans 8.31 is really true now. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Why? Because he's leading me. He's instructing me. He's guiding me. Woo! Glory to God. Look there in Psalms 48. Let's pick it up in verse 14. Psalms 48. I just want to give you some scripture on how committed he is to guide us. Amen. Because we're living in a day where we need to be led. Where we need to be guided. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And everything that God has promised, planned to do, is subject to us following him. Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 19, follow me and I will make you. Man, if you follow Jesus, he's going to make you more than a conqueror. If you follow Jesus, he's going to make you the healed instead of the sick. If you follow Jesus, he's going to make you the wealthy instead of poverty. Amen. If you follow him. Amen. He gonna make you. Amen. The making is in the following. Amen. 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 Now notice what he said. For this is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Woo. So it don't mean whatever, amen, life bring me to or whatever others try to do with me. God is committed to guide me right out of it. He'll guide you out of any trouble, any situation, whether it's your fault or somebody else. If you will let him guide you, and if you will follow him, he'll guide you right out of it. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Look how 
God guided Paul, took him from being a persecutor, a murderer, amen, an offender of the church, amen, and made him, amen, a man of God, where he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Boy, he guided him right out of there, didn't he? Look at Rahab the prostitute. Amen. She was the black sheep of the family. The ridicule put her, wrote her off. But God sent two spies, amen, to guide her. Right out of that, amen, destructive lifestyle. Where well, she made Hebrews chapter 11, a woman, a preacher out of faith. Glory to God. He's committed to guide us. Woohoo! Glory to God. Amen. Besides the waters, in the green pastures, Right out of want and lack and in the plenty. <laughs> He's committed to God. Amen. Woo! Glory, what are we committed to follow? Amen. Amen. Now, why do we need divine guidance? Why is it so important? Look there in Proverbs 14, 12. I'm going to show you how important it is. Amen. Now, notice what Proverbs 14, verse 12 says. There is a way that seems right. Now, pay attention to this now. Amen. Please pay attention to this. I'm telling you, I'm teaching this by the spirit of the living God because I believe that this is the message, amen, that belongs to this ministry, amen, for us to continue to remain relevant in the earth. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Now, notice what he says. There is a, a way that seems right to a man, but the end is what? Destructive. Can y'all see this? So this is why divine guidance is so important. It's because the enemy will introduce to you things that seems right to try to get you to follow that so he can destroy you. The enemy cannot destroy you unless you let him guide you. He cannot steal from you and kill you unless you let him guide you. Glory to God. Anything that God want to do in your life, anything that the devil want to do in your life, is subject to you following them. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. I said, are you seeing this? Look there in Proverbs, I'm sorry, uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Let's pick it up in verse 10. The Bible says, there are many voices in the earth, and none of them are without signification. You're hearing all kind of voices, particularly when you need to make decisions. Woo! Come on. Amen. You know, when you need to make important decisions, you get to hear all kinds of stuff. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Notice what he said. He said, he said, he said in Proverbs 1 Corinthians 14, 10, there, there are many voices in the earth. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And none of them are without signification. And Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 4, he said, my sheep know my voice, yes. but the voice of a stranger they won't follow. There are strange voices in the earth today, y'all. Right. And they're trying to get us to follow them. Amen. And if you don't know the voice of Jesus, you won't know how to follow him. Amen. 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 Now, what's the voice of Jesus? The voice of Jesus is the voice of truth. Yeah, right. It's the voice of your convictions and conscience. Yeah, right. It's the voice of love. Because God is love. Yeah. So, and the Bible tells us to follow, be ye, uh, Ephesians 5 verse 1, be ye followers of God as dear children and do what? Walk in love. So every time you choose to walk in love, you follow in Jesus. Every time you choose to walk in truth, you follow in Jesus. Every time you listen to your convictions and conscience, you follow in Jesus. Now I'm just trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you how to stay free. Because the enemy, he can only incarcerate you to the degree that you follow him. Amen. Glory to God. In order for him to defeat you and then steal from you and destroy you, you have to follow him. It doesn't happen accidentally. Mm. Amen. It happens by choosing and refusing. Amen. Glory to God. And so following Jesus is my responsibility, not his. Mm. Amen. Amen. 
Just like if, if uh, I've never been to Nashville before, and Sister Luana said, Pastor, uh, uh, follow you and First Lady, follow me. We'll take you. I'll take you there. And we get in the car and follow her. And some trucks get in between us. Amen. So some cars. What's our responsibility? It's to get away from riding her so we can get back behind her so we can follow her so she can take us the way we're supposed to go. But don't you know when you set out to follow the Lord, some trucks of the enemy, sin, great relationships, amen, things people gonna say and do, they gonna get in between you and Jesus. Amen, to try to keep you from following him. And you gotta get that stuff out of the way. And you do it with a choice. Mm. Mm. It's like when you change lanes on the interstate. How you do that? With a choice. You cut your blink off, that's a choice, isn't it? Yeah. And then you get over there. And, and, well, it's the same way you do with sin. That's the same way you do with unforgiveness. That's the same way you do with giving, serving. It's a choice. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you can't blame that on God or nobody else. Yeah. Woo! Glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. So, so we see the importance of following it. Let me show you something else. Look at with me to Acts, Acts, Acts 26. Acts, this is a very, this is, I'm telling you, you all, if you will just listen to this, listen and do this, I'm telling you, you'll start seeing an immediate change in your life. And the change, it's, 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 it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be like a, uh, uh, you know, like a, 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 a captain on a ship, a ship on the sea, you know, when he turned that rudder a certain way, they, they don't really see the change right then. But guess what? That captain see it. He know he done turned that rudder this way. So he tell everybody on the ship, this is the way we're going. Even though it looked like this way. But guess what? Everything, amen, connected to that decision, the engine, the, the turnpike, amen, everything is trying to prep that ship this direction, right? And I'm telling you, and if you keep it turned that way, soon you're going to see the effects of it in your life. I'm telling you, you're going to see it. And you're going to start going this way. You know why, Sister Vicky? Because decisions determines direction. And direction determines destiny. Yeah. Hmm. You want to go a different destiny? Amen. Amen. Then change your direction. Yeah. How you going to change your direction? Changing your decisions. Yeah. Hmm. Y'all get this? I can't go a different, amen, direction until I change my decisions. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, you listen, the day we living in is so fierce. I mean, it's fierce and ferocious. I mean, fierce and ferocious. It is not going to get any better from the world's standpoint, but from your standpoint. Amen. God said in Proverbs 4.18, the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. So it's getting worse and worse for them. But for you, Oh, it couldn't be no better. It's, it's getting better and better, brighter and brighter for you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Ain't it right? Because you follow him. Amen. Glory to God. Get on, get on to this, y'all. I'm not serious. Get on to this. He'll lead you right out of the worst crisis you in. I mean, he'll lead you right out of that. He will. He's committed to do it. But are we committed to follow? Amen. Look at Acts 16. Here's, here's verse, verse 7. Let's pick it up in verse 7. Acts 16, verse 7. This is the Apostle Paul and his company. And, uh, and, and see, I want you to see something. I want you, Acts 16, 7. Listen to me. Y'all look up at me. Look up at me real quick. Listen, you don't know enough about yourself to guide yourself. Amen. You got to understand that, y'all. You don't know enough about yourself to make decisions for tomorrow. You don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring. Ain't right. that what Jesus said in, in Matthew 6, verse 30? He said, take no thought for tomorrow, for you don't know what tomorrow is. You don't know 
more tomorrow's garbage man. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know enough to guide yourself. You don't know, you don't even know you yes, sir. enough to, uh, to guide you. Yes. Amen. Yes. And this is proof that you don't know enough about why you sat and guess yourself. That's proof right there, right? Amen. Do God ever second guess himself? Do Jesus ever second? No. Amen. Even Jesus didn't know enough about himself to guide himself. Look there in John chapter 12. Look at verse 49 and 50. Jesus didn't even know enough about himself to guide himself. I in the world, we gonna out outdo him. Look there. Look, look at John. John chapter, uh, what's that? 12? We're going to go back to Acts 16, 7. Look at John 12, uh, verse 49 and 50. Amen. I want y'all to see this because this is where God helped me at, Sister Luan. He said, boy, if you don't know enough about you to be making them kind of decisions for the future. I said, I said what do you mean, Lord? He said, you didn't inquire me about that. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he'll do what? Direct your paths. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Notice what he said. Jesus said, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. See, when you get right there like that, right there, Man, you feel it. you headed to your wealthy place. You headed to healing and health, prosperity and wealth. You headed for your breakthrough. Amen. Jesus made a decision that he couldn't trust himself. Amen. Are you seeing this? Yeah. Man, Jesus made this, and we're supposed to follow him. We're supposed to say the same thing. I can't say nothing that God didn't say. I can't do nothing that he don't do. That's right. I can't talk how I feel and talk how I think. I don't know enough. Mm. Oh, God. Oh. I'm telling you, I'm showing you how to ride a wave in this, in this depressive world. I'm, I'm going I'm to get it. Listen, the Spirit of God, you're going to catch a wave today. Yeah. It is going to flood out everything the enemy trying to do to you. Because you're going to hook up with divine guidance. Yeah. And you're going to put trust in yourself. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Look what Jesus said. He said, what I, he gave me commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Look at verse 50. This is why he experienced so many miracles. Suddenly, immediately miracles. Verse 50. And, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father saith unto me, so I speak. So when Jesus says something, that's when I get to say something. I don't get to say nothing if he ain't saying nothing. I don't get to give my opinion. I don't get to give what I think. I don't even get to give what I know. I get to give what he said. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 to 6. I'm going to show y'all how to do this. But I, because so much of the time we train ourselves, condition ourselves to follow ourselves. We make decisions and choices. We, we are conditionally trained to decide on our own. Mm. Y'all hear me now? Hear me. And you got to uncondition yourself. This is part of renewing the mind. Is, is, is learning not to trust your choices, but Jesus' choices. Amen. What he thinks and say. Glory to God. And you'll ride on top of every storm that comes in this world. Amen. Amen. Every test will turn into a testimony. You'll have a solution and answer to every crisis. You'll go up, up, and up, and up, and up. Last, last week will never be better than this week. This week will always top last week. Right. Next week will always top this week. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You keep doing what Jesus said. Amen. Watch what he said. Let your conversation be without co covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he have said, who said this? Jesus. What did he say, Andre? I'll never leave you 
I'll never forsake you. Amen. Look at verse 6. Verse 6. Said, hey, Jesus said, I'll never do. He said, so that we may but now get to say something, Mr. Jesus. Once I heard Jesus say something, and he take a position where I'm concerned, now I get to talk, Sister Vicky. Now what I'm going to say after he said he'll never leave me or forsake me, I boldly say, now, Sister Luana, the Lord is my help. Woo! Glory. Why? Because I done heard him say something. What did he say? I, I, I ain't going to forsake you. I'm going to be with you. Hell, you go wherever you do. I ain't going to forsake you. Woo! Now, I can boldly say. See, a lot of times we say something before he say something. Oh, my God. Oh, we don't get to say something until after he say something. Woo! Because after he say something, and you say something, you say it low in there. Woo! You don't even get to pray no more. You, you get to say that. You don't pray, you say it. You don't say, Lord, be with me, be heaven. Uh-uh. What's he saying? He with you, and he'll never leave or forsake you. Now you say, Jesus is with me. Jesus is helping me. I'm doing what he told me to do. I got his back and his support and help. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Oh, this got to work. I know it's going to work. Before I even, I even see it work, it got to work. Because Jesus told me to do it. Jesus told me to say it. Jesus said to me. Yeah. Woo! Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 That's all Peter had to do. When Jesus told him in Matthew 14, 28, amen, he was walking on the water. Jesus, Peter and them thought it was a ghost and, uh, and a spirit, and they was afraid. And Jesus said, be not afraid. It is I. Mm -hmm. And Peter said, Lord, if. See, he messed up right there. Jesus, I already done told him who it was. If it be you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, boy, come on. Woo! But he never settled that if. And he stepped out to walk with Jesus. Amen. Prematurely. Mm -hmm. See, you got to settle the if. Yeah. That's why you got to know it's him. Yeah. Or else when you step out on your business, yeah. on your ministry, amen, you're going to be paying attention to the winds, the waves, the storms, and not Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Paul had the same condition, right? In the shipwreck, in Acts 20, 20, 28, he, I mean 27, he had the same shipwreck, shipwreck, storm beating, amen. In Acts 27, verse 20, the Bible said when no, no uh, stars, a sun, a moon, a light appeared, all hope of living and surviving was taken away. Wow. Woo! And Paul withdrew himself. And the Bible said when he did, there stood by him an angel of God. And he spoke to him. And said, Paul, don't be afraid. Amen. You're not only going to be saved, but all these people who with you, all 276 people on this ship, ain't none of them, ain't none of them going to lose their life. Matter of fact, ain't a hair on their head going to be touched. Amen. He spoke to him right in that storm. Right when all hope of living was gone. Amen. Jesus said, you ain't going to lose a hair on your head. And Paul left that place of prayer and came out and told them men, be a good cheer. Why? There stood by me this night an angel of the Lord of who I am and who I serve. And I believe God. Yeah. 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 Glory to God. Yeah. In the end result, everybody was saying. Yeah. Can y'all see that? Yeah. See, when Jesus says something, you get to say something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you, you need to let him say something. Before you say something, no, this is what I think. Oh, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. No! <laughs> Amen. The Lord already overcame what you're going through. He already been through that. He already passed that test. He already triumphed over it. He's already victorious. Amen. Just get him to say something. And when he say something, you don't even have to pray no more, Mr. Tommy. You just say it. Amen. Just say what he say. The Lord is my helper. Woo! I'm going to say, put that up in the 
that amplified. Amen. Hebrews 13, uh, verse 6. Put that in the amplified. Woo, good. Do we got the amplified on that? Amen. He, do we got that minister dog with the amplified? Go with the God. Amen. I want to see that in the amplified. Because I want y'all to see how committed he is to lead you and guide you. Ain't no chance, no trial, no situation bigger than Jesus Amen. and what he said. Glory to God. Amen. I done learned how to get him to say something. Amen. Pastor Nate, listen, if Jesus don't say that, I ain't going to say that. Amen. I done learned how to take stuff I say back. <laughs> I mean, I be done said it. Amen. <laughs> Sister Yvonne, I be done said it. <laughs> and I said, no, that ain't Jesus, man. I'll take that back. I ain't mean to say that. Amen. I don't care how good it's up. I take it back. Because I'm learning. Yeah. Amen. How to say what he said. Yes. That's when it's going to work. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Look at what he said. So that we may boldly say, the amplified verse, the Lord is my help, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The amplified verse said, he will not relax his hold upon you or take his support from you. I will not. I will absolutely not. That's what he said. Glory to God. So when you when you when you know what Jesus is saying, you are properly backed. I said you are properly backed. Amen. I will confidently say, the Lord is my help. I will not be afraid. What? What can this coronavirus do to me? What can this person do to me? But I'm doing what Jesus said. Whatever can't overcome him can't overcome me. Now, nah, y'all got y'all shouting shoes on? Y'all yeah. do? Yeah. For real? Yeah. I mean, look at your feet and see if they're shouting shoes. Yeah. We're going to get a shot in here in a minute. Yeah. I'm going to have to take a, a, a veer off of this message a little bit. Divine guidance. We're going to pick back up next week for the time's sake. Because this week I meant to hit on how does he guide us? He really used three things to guide us. Number one, his word. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 119, 105 said, say his word is a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. Mm -hmm. Amen. His word. His word. He, you got to be a person of the word in order for Jesus to speak to you and guide you. Yeah. Isaiah 34, verse 16. He says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Amen. None of these things shall fail. Yeah. That's what Isaiah 34, 16. He said, you want me to lead you and guide you? Get your Bible out. Amen. Get it off that coffee table. Y'all don't have to go up. We good. Let the musicians go up. Amen. Glory to God. Now, notice what he said. He said, he said, sit ye out the book of the Lord and read. And read. And read. Yeah. Don't look at all the obituaries in it from my tea up and down and sister stories up. No. No. Take your Bible and say, oh, that's not out of there. Lord. And get your highlight, your pen out, and you read. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Are y'all seeing this today? Amen. Your Bible ain't for holding all that stuff in it. Mm. Your Bible is for reading, for eating. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, what's that? 15, verse 16. Jeremiah 15, 15. He said, your words were found, and I did eat them. And they were the rejoicing of my heart. You got to eat this word. Jesus said, man, should not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth. If you want God to divinely guide you, you got to read his word. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Now, now, why did he have to tell him in Isaiah 34, 16, to seek ye out the book? Because they had lost. They don't even remember what their Bible was. I'm, I'm telling you, Christians can go so, amen, accustomed and so routinely that they don't even read their Bibles. And Isaiah had to tell him, seek ye out the book and read. Number two, he leads us by his spirit. Somebody said, by his spirit. By his spirit. John 16, verse 13. He said, uh, he said uh, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
The Holy Spirit is in you to guide you, to lead you, to direct you. Amen. And then number three, he, he leads you through others. Somebody say through others. Yeah. Come on, say it again. Yeah. Through who? Yeah. Others. Look there with me in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32. He leads us through others. Just like my man uh, worked there at the, uh, the, 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 the Kroger's. Last night, the Lord, I ran out of ice and I couldn't get my ice to do. So I, 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 I went down to Kroger's and gave me some ice and my man was there, right there. Amen. Amen. And I said, bro, come on church. He said, man, where the church is? He, he right here today. See, yeah. see, God led him through mothers. Yeah. Are y'all seeing this today? Yeah. See, he leads us through others. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. He said, he said, uh, I'm, I'm commending you to the sons of Ezekiel. Amen. Who has understanding of what? He has understanding of what? The coronavirus times, the economic oppression times, right? All the uproar, the, the destruction going in the world. See, God has given somebody an understanding of these times. And then he said, now you, you all get there over to him because he's going to show you what to do. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is where our safety is, right here. Knowing what to do in these times. Yeah, Are y'all seeing this? Yeah. Then we're going to go to 1 Peter, uh, and we're going to close. 3, 20, 20, 20, 20, and 21. I wish I had this out of Amplify. Who got that microphone? Amen. Can I get one of these microphones up here? Give me one of the microphones right here. Amen. I want to read this out of Amplified first. The message. The message. The message. Read that out of the message. You got the message? Who got the message? Whoever got the message? Sister Luana. I want y'all to read that out of the message first. Amen. Because I want y'all to see that Jesus, when he says so, it's the final say. I said, it's the final say. Yes. When Jesus say something about your healing situation, your prosperity money situation, it's the final say. Don't nothing else come after that. It don't need no modifying. It, didn't, it, don't, it just need to be received just like he said. He told the two lepers when they came to him for healing, he told them in Luke 17 verse 11, go show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said why they went, they were healed. He told Peter in Luke 5, Verse 3 through uh, 7. Uh, they ain't been out fishing. They ain't caught nothing all night. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said, go on, child, in the deep. Let out your net for a drop. And the Bible said, when they had done this, they encompassed a great number of fish so that their nets began to break. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in John chapter 4, verse 46, there was a century who had a son. He was at the point of death, Sister Luana. And, 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 and the man told Jesus, come down to my house and heal my son. Jesus said, go your way. Your son ain't dead, he living. And the man said, yeah, he died. Jesus said, no, he living. And the Bible said the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken to him. And while he was on his way down his house, some of his servants met him and, and, and said, be a good cheer. Your son liveth. And the man said, when did he begin to amend? When did he begin to get well? And the servant said, uh, about a certain hour ago, and the man, the man knew something. What did he know, Brother Andre? He knew that that was the hour that he believed what Jesus said. Amen. 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 I'm telling you. When you say, Pastor, I, I, I knew that. No, 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 no. Let me, let me tell you. And it's one problem you got, like a rich young ruler. Jesus said, you lack one thing. You want me to show you what that lack one thing is? This way it is. James 1, 21. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Yes. See, that meekness where the word is, you can't wish it was different. You, you can't protest it. You can't argue with it. It's Jesus. Yes. It's the master. The one who know everything. Yes. He told you what to do about that. Amen. 
And you can't wish you with that fruit. Amen. When he said pray for those who persecute you, hate you, talk about you, you're not going to do that. Amen. And you do it delightfully, Amen. joyfully, Amen. like it's really going to change. Uh, 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 you know, reasoning. 
And your soul will say, your body, the body say it don't feel good. You look at it, it's science. Science say you sneeze and you got this and you got that science. But your spirit and your conscience say, Jesus got the final say. And Jesus said, He took my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses when He died on the tree. And by His stripes, I'm here. And that's the final say. So you tell your soul, I don't care nothing about reasoning. I don't care nothing about my feelings or my body. All I'm telling you is what Jesus said. Telling your soul and your body that. Woo! Glory to God. And they're going to finally see that Jesus got the final son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah, the voice of your body, the feelings, they real. Amen. It's a fact. But it ain't the truth. The truth is what Jesus said. Amen. It was a fact with the woman with the issue of blood. Amen. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. Spent all she had. Nothing better than bread and grew worse. And the Bible said when she heard of Jesus, she heard that he had the final say. So she pressed in behind and touched the garment and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Why? But well, she said, when I touch what is close, I shall be made whole. See, listen, listen, I'm telling you, the, the voice of your body, amen, is your feelings. The voice of your, 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 your mind and your, your soul, it is reasoning. And they try to compete and join up and gain up on the voice of your conscience, your conviction and your spirit. Woo! They try to rule over your spirit, but that ain't their place. Your spirit's supposed to rule over them because that's where Jesus is.
need to give thanks. You don't even need to pray. You need to pray to get him to say something. But once he says something, you just say what he says. And that's it. Glory to God. Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto thee. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over. Jesus said, glory to God. Paul had got to this place where he let Jesus have the final say. And look what he said in Romans 8. Amen. Let's pick it up at verse 31. And we're going to close with this. Y'all listen. I'm telling you, y'all, that this kind of teaching right here it, it is it's so rich. Be, be, because it's so simple, though. But it's so rich because it, it carries restoration and redemption virtues. That, that should be me, it'll restore to you everything you done stole, uh, that been stolen from you. And, and, and it'll redeem you from everything that's happening to others. That's the kind of virtues this message. He said, Pastor Mike, do you ever have any problem? I said, I, I probably do, I just don't notice it. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because I let him have the final say on anything. People say things, they talk about, but you can't argue with the fruit. You can't argue with the outcome. You can't argue with the, you can't argue with the fruit. There's one thing you can't argue with, and that's fruit. They can get mad, jealous, whatever. As long as I'm doing what Jesus said. That's all the back that I need. Amen. Amen. Now watch this right here. Watch this. What shall we say? See? See that word say? Huh? See, now we're getting ready to say something. See, we don't get to say it until he said. Paul says, so what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, do y'all really believe that? I think it didn't pass a name. It's a thought of living. Costed him his son. 
So I ain't looking at it whether or not I can do without it. I'm looking at it in light of what it cost to God for me to be made whole.
now I'm ready to pray now. I have set you up on the walls of Jerusalem, and you shall never hold your peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, don't you keep silence. Watch this next verse. Watch what he said in verse 7. He said, he said, he said, and give me no rest until I establish it, until I make you a praise in the earth. Don't you stop asking me for it until you see it. You better start acting like you can't do without it. You better start acting like there ain't no other way. Amen. There ain't no other, no other answer. There ain't no other way you can get it. You need to pray like you can't do without what I promised you. Are you seeing this? Yeah. So whenever that thing is prolonged, look like it ain't come. I just tell the Lord, Lord, you know, you need to tell me you're going to hold something back and, and make me wait and, and, and constitute yeah. your life for me to have. Yeah. Waiting is mocking you. Yeah. You're going yeah. to let, let me do without this and, 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 and constitute your life and you paid all that for me to have. Boy, when I get to talking to him like that, I don't give him no rest. <laughs> I keep mentioning to him. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, glory to God. Did yeah. he just show up? Right. Career, business, ministry, everything. Yeah. You just act like you can't do it, does yeah. Whoa, glory. Because whatever he sees that you see that you can do it now, that he, he ain't even qualified. He ain't even authorized to bring that. Because the condition is to desire it. Whatsoever things you desire that you see you can't do it now. That's what you get to pray for. That's why, you know what? I guarantee you, how many of y'all prayed yesterday? Okay, if I were to ask you, what did you pray about? See? Y'all see what I'm saying? But you ask me what I'm praying for. I'll be able to tell you why. Because I'm actually desiring this. And I can't do without it. I can't do without it. I can't do without it. Woo! I'm still mentioning it to him today. Glory to God. Amen. I ain't swinging loose from it. Now watch this. When Jesus was praying in the garden of Gethsemane and being tempted, 
he 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 said, Father, if, if if you will let this cup pass me. But then what did he do? He fixed it real quick, didn't he? What did he say? Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Whew. See, he went from prayer to saying. Jesus. Glory. See, once he said, you don't pray no more. You just, you just say what he said and get right. That's it. Now watch this right here. Matthew chapter. What we say? Luke what? Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke 4, 46. Look what Jesus said. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Don't do what I say. Ain't that what he said? I said, ain't that what Luke 6, Luke, no, Luke 6, 46, 6, 46. Why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Ain't that what he said? All right. Now, what did that got to do with healing? Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent his word. Has he already said something about our healing? He said he took our infirmities and brought our sickness, right? Yeah. And by his stripes we're healed. Didn't he say that? Yeah. He said he sent his word and go what? Heal and deliver me from all of my destruction. So that's what you say. You tell that sickness, that ailment, Jesus already done sent the word. And the word that he already sent has already healed me and delivered me from me. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Whatever element in your body, you speak to that thing. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to you on the authority of the word of God. Jesus said he took you. He bore you for me. And what he bore for me, I need not bear. You are a thief. And I arrest you with the word of God. I bind you, uproot you, and forcefully remove you from my body. You are trespassing on God's property. God said that this is his body and this is his spirit. And he told me to glorify him with my body and with his spirit, which is his and not yours. Now I command you in the name of Jesus by the authority of the word of God to vacate these premises. Vacate the body of God. Please vacate this temple. Vacate these premises in the name of Jesus. Depart from me back. Yes, Lord. Don't you ever come back. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said his house to be called a house of prayer and he drove out every every thief amen every corrupter of his house he took the will of the word of god and he drove them with the thieves out he drove amen those thieves and robbers out yes so i drive you out with in the name of jesus christ i drive you out with the word of the living god yes no longer permitted occupy these premises. Yes, I take the share for the word of God. And I serve you in a victory notice. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Amen.
when I give, it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be given to my bosom. So I declare and decree this week, somebody, somewhere, gonna cross my path, and they gonna give me something that I did not earn. They gonna give me something. Amen. Glory to God. Things will be given to me this week. Because Jesus is here. Yes, Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, Pastor, if I do all this saying, when, what, what am I going to pray? Lord, if it be your will, Lord, show me what, show me what to do. Show me, give me a word, Lord. Yeah. See, that's what you're praying. Man. But once you give that word, you, you don't pray, you say it. Glory to God. We pray about no mountains. He says, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that barrier. Speak to that hindrance. Speak to that delay. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch these testimonies come right up. Watch Watch them. Hallelujah. You got to do your thoughts like that, too. Boy, with them thoughts come in your mind, remember that's the voice of your reason. Y'all remember that thoughts? Thoughts are like fiery dots. They, they fiery. They fiery. And they coming, they coming like arrows. Amen. But Jesus said, take no thought, say it. So though the thought come to your mind, don't say it. Yeah. Unless it's a Jesus thought. Jesus. I don't feel good today. Quit saying that. Jesus. This is a day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I choose to rejoice. Jesus. And be glad in it. Even if you have to go see the physician. Amen. Tell the physician. Yeah, this is the day. The Lord is man. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. See, don't stop saying what Jesus is saying. Amen. Just tell him, say, you're you going to help me until I see what to say. <laughs> Will you show me what to say? Oh, hey, I'm going to need your help with the moment. Holy God. Amen. Amen. See, don't get on the wrong side of it. Just don't stop saying what he say. Y'all hear me? Man. Well, you lying. Listen to your feeling. No, no, that's the voice of vanity. Them things can change. Jesus said he's saying yesterday, today, and forever. I'm going to say that he said against it. Man. Amen. I'm not going to take this stuff. I remember, you know, I was uh, waiting to work out. Woke up the next day, my back, boy, I couldn't even, sister Dominique, I couldn't even move out of the bed. And you know what I said? If I could just make it to my body, yes, yes. this will all come to an end. Yes, yes. So I rolled out the bed, hit the floor, blew. And my Bible was over on the desk. I just reached up out. Soon I put my hand on, I didn't get to read. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. Oh, yeah. All that stiffness back. I got up and went and worked out, ran two miles that day. Yes. Amen. Because yes. I didn't take that long. Yes. Amen. Now I'm gonna say this and we're gonna go for real. Listen, because some of y'all, 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 you are putting up with that sickness. Yes. You're putting up with it. Yes. You 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 can you gotta treat it like a burglar. Yes. The longer you leave a burglar in the house, it's going to find stuff. You got to get that burglar out of that house. And this is what Jesus showed, told me to show you. He said he want to heal you, not just based upon what it costed him. He said he want to heal you because you're his body. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if some part of your body starts hurting, do you want that to keep hurting? Well, you're Jesus' body. Yeah. Act like your body is healed. Yeah. Yeah. And when you act like your body is healed, he go treat it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now put your hand, take your hand and put them on your head. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Say this, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. That I am. That I am. The temple. The of, the living God. of the living God and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit dwells, in me, dwells in me on the inside of me inside and, he knows, and he knows all things and he knows everything and he, knows everything. And he, and he is, the is the one that you have sent to quicken to my, my mortal body that's what you sent him that's what he sent me to do. It's to quicken. To make a life. To give me more of your life. Holy Spirit. Quicken my mortal body. Quicken every organ. Quicken every cell. Quicken every joint. Quicken every marrow. Quicken every tissue. Quicken every artery. Quicken every organ. Quicken every cell. Quicken every artery. Quicken every vein. Quicken. 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 This body. In Jesus' name. Ah, there you go right there. <laughs>